Hi everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. Today we're going to look at the Coros Pace 3 releasing today and shipping September 5th. So it's a dramatically updated version of the Pace, um, which has been around since 2019. It's $229 and it is a very fully capable and well-featured watch. So we're going to get into some of the details in our review here. Hi everybody, Sam from Road Trail Run. Today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Coros Pace 3, which is releasing in early September, September 5th. Um, it is a essentially a brand new Pace uh, 3. I first ran into Coros back in 2017 at the CES Electronic Show in Vegas, where they announced the original Pace, a $200 uh, well-featured GPS watch. We reviewed it in 2019. Now we're in 2023 and we have a Pace 3. So the Pace 3 is significantly updated over the Pace 2. Um, yes, it finally increases in price because it was originally a $200 watch, Pace 1, Pace 2. Now it's $229 but we're gonna get quite a few new features and capabilities, not least of which is battery life with a spec GPS only 38 hours, uh, 25 all network GPS, and it now has dual frequency. So um, 15 hours in dual frequency, daily use they're saying up to 24 days, um, and um, 18 with sleep tracking uh, in days. So uh, the prior Pace only had a 30-hour GPS battery life, and it did not have uh, the, the multiple networks capabilities. The big new features are we now have a, um, a new uh, sensing system. We have onboard music with four gigs of storage. We have a touch screen. Uh, we have um, uh, turn by turn directions will be coming soon to the breadcrumb navigation. She drop in weight, it's about the same weight, 30 grams, uh, but it does get a half a millimeter thinner and thin watches really are more comfortable. Light thin watches will give you more accuracy and, more and are more comfortable. Here's what it looks like on my wrist. So um, let me give you a brief demonstration on watch of some of its capabilities. Of course, with Coros, you always have the digital dial. So if you scroll the dial in either direction, you can go in both directions, you'll see your basic statistics for the day. You can, uh, you can also uh, drill down. I've only had it 3.75 days, and today I, I pushed pretty hard. So you can see what, what I've been up to here. Um, and then you always use the back button right here to, um, to go back. So you have all kinds of interesting statistics. I had pretty good sleep last night. Uh, on watch, the sleep module is pretty basic. It's not quite what Polar does, but it's sufficient. 27 feet, so there's a barometric altimeter and we are about at 27 feet above sea level, plus or minus a few feet. And there's your, your barometer, barometric pressure, temperature, um, and you can of course get to notifications. So let's go back and uh, let me show you how a, a uh, run might work. Uh, and also how the logbook works, where um, what you'll see at the end of the run on a watch. So to initiate a run, press our digital dial, and we'll scroll. You have training plans, you have fitness tests, multiple, multiple um, sport modes, and I've, I've just loaded the ones that I may do. So here's a run. So to start a run and, and uh, find our GPS, our uh, GPS satellites, we press, and generally it's taken me about five seconds for it to initiate, but I've, the house is, oh, look at that, just a couple seconds. Then uh, off you go. Of course, there's no heart rate because I'm not wearing it, but so we'll, we'll, we'll start in. And you can see, these are the screens I've configured. So we'll press in. And we will uh, 
hit the finish here, scrolling in that direction, hold it for three seconds, and we will discard it. So let's go down here and I'll show you a run I did today. Pretty good run, actually, for me. Um, with a lot of starts and stops because I was taking pictures, but you can access those from your history. Press, press in again. Of course, we can um, swipe back out, but here's what you'll see on the watch in terms of uh, the logbook and the history for this run. I think really quite complete. Different zones. Um, I compared it on the run today to a Garmin 4Runner 265, and I got exactly the same average heart rate, and the Garmin was 157 on the max heart rate, so very close. So you're getting quality metrics here. Even stride length. So now we can back out. So um, what I've done so far uh, in terms of the um, uh, testing, I've only had it uh, a little less than four days, is I am, I am seeing, uh, what I'm seeing is in 3.75 days of, of, um, of running and just everyday use, sleep monitoring, etc. What I'm seeing is uh, that I'm estimating and I average 45, about 45 minutes per day of um, moving time, actually a bit more with all my stops for pictures, that you'll get 9.6 days of battery life at 45 minutes per day. I'm gonna re, uh, be continuing to test that. Um, I also tested it uh, in he heavy tree cover on a road out and back, and it tracked very, very closely to the, um, to the, uh, to the Garmin in all respects. So, uh, at $229, with an incredibly long battery life for such a small, thin watch, uh, and lots of features, and I'm going to show you the app now, this is really one heck of a value, as Koros has always been. Um, most all of the features that you'll find, except uh, the kind of the full-scale topo maps in uh, higher-end um, Koros, such as the Vertex, are in this little quality watch. Uh, the band is nylon. It's uh, very comfortable. I like nylon bands over silicone because you can get them nice and tight. They tend to, to, to kind of be much more comfortable. I'll say I've been wearing it, you know, for the last four days and on the run, it is completely unnoticeable. Even compared to that uh, Garmin, which only weighs um, eight grams more, but has a uh, silicone strap. So it's probably weighs about the same. So uh, let me put it on my wrist here to show you what it looks like on wrist. Easy to pull on, not too strap. Isn't so short that it comes off, you know, pulls out of the thing. Let me, you can see it's, it's quite thin light it doesn't really have a huge huge presence on the wrist as those big uh, titanium bevel, bezel watches do, do but boy you'll just forget you have it on so it is at in, with its small diameter and thin si th thinness and lightweight it's excellent for thin wrists and here's what our same run looks like uh, via the Koros app which I think is really excellently done lots of metrics lots of detail easily, well, well, well presented. So um, I really think they've improved this app tremendously and it really uh, matches up very closely to others. Uh, you'll notice all the dips there, the stops, because I was stopping date pictures. I think I could work on my cadence a bit. So here's how you change the data fields in the app. You start by selecting your layout, then you, where it's highlighted, you can change. So what I'm gonna do is change laps to lap power. So you'll see how that happens. Uh, I pick lap power off the bottom after scrolling, and there now it's showing up. And then uh, you click save, and it instantly uh, syncs to the watch. More testing to come, but the Coros Pace 3 at $229 is a tremendous value. With its added battery life, music on board, even turn-by-turn -turn, um, uh, navigation directions, and a great screen, it's a really fine little watch. We'll also have a... Um, a linked here, a uh, written review, 
and I'm going to continue my testing. Have a great run.